Hello dear students, welcome to the course of Engineering Thermodynamics. Myself, Mihir Misri, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to discuss our session on first law of thermodynamics. So first law of thermodynamics, first of all we will let us discuss sign convention for heat transfer and work transfer. That is a very basic and fundamental concept. So let us start the discussion of sign convention for heat transfer and work transfer. So here let us consider a system. Now first we will consider the heat transfer. So for this system if heat is added to the system then it will be taken as positive and if the heat is rejected by the system then it will be taken as negative. Remember students I am repeating again if heat is added to the system then it will be taken as positive if it is rejected by the system, then it will be taken as negative. Further, same way, if we consider the work transfer, then again let us consider this system as shown on the screen. Here, if we will consider the work done on the system and or work done to the system or work done or work provided to the system, then it shall be taken as negative. And same way, if work done by the system, then it shall be considered as positive. The purpose of doing so is to make uniform sign convention throughout the world. So if you are talking over here also or in some other country, then sign convention will be same. That is if heat is added, then you can consider it positive. Heat is rejected, take it negative. Same way the reverse case for work. Right? So it is simple to understand. Now the next topic is first law for a closed system undergoing a cycle. Now, first of all, first law, right? So, first law is what? Simple. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but it, it can transform from one form to another form that you know, right? So, here, first law for closed system we will define. The meaning of closed system is very much known to you. That is, mass cannot transfer from the system to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the system, but the energy can transfer that is known as closed system and this system is going under a cycle. Now meaning of a cycle is what? Meaning of a cycle is simple that your initial and final points will be identical with each other and you have combination of more than two processes, two or more than two processes, right? So now let us understand. So for understanding purpose, we will consider the diagram shown on the screen. So as you can see on this diagram here, we have a vessel which is filled with water right in this vessel we are dipping one stirrer that is on the right hand side and a thermometer for the temperature measurement that is on the left hand side right the stirrer is connected to the weight through pulley and combination of rope okay so now the first initially what will happen initially this weight will be at the top position let us consider at this position that is i am highlighting it by a red color right now the initially the vessel is completely insulated that is adiabatic walls are provided and adiabatic covers is also provided right so initially the weight is somewhere over here right so what will happen this water will have certain temperature and other properties right corresponding to the position of weight over here so what we will do we will plot that on y and x axis let us consider the initial uh, situation or initial state is defined as point number one right now what we are doing we are bringing down the weight towards the downward direction so if we will bring down the weight towards the right downward direction then what will happen you know if you will bring down the weight towards the downward direction then due to this arrangement of pulley and rope this stirrer will start rotating and as soon as the stirrer will start rotating then you can easily see over here that the stirrer blades are in contact with the water molecules so there will be some friction between the stirrer blades and water molecules so if the stirrer blades will start rotating due to the friction the temperature of the water will rise okay and that can be identified using the thermometer provided on the other side okay so now as soon as we are bringing down the weight towards the downward side so the new state will be achieved in the water so that new state we are achieving let us define it as point number two so in order to move from one to two what we have done we have done work on the system 
right? So we have done work on the system. So here you can see because uh, the through the combination of pulley and weight, we have applied or impart some work on the water. So that is known as W12. Okay, so I hope you can appreciate I have written W12 over here. Further, now what we will do, the weight has uh, to uh, reach to the bottom side, right? Now the water has gained a new state. Now we are removing the adiabatic walls. So you know that uh, at point number two, the temperature of the water is somewhat higher or the internal energy of the molecules of water is somewhat higher due to the work transfer. Now we are removing the adiabatic vessels. So now you know the adiabatic vessel is removed and the ambient temperature is let us say less than the temperature of the water. So what will happen? Heat will start transferring from the water to the ambient right because of the temperature difference. So if the heat will tra start transferring, so for how much time the heat will transfer obviously to the time at which the temperature of water and atmosphere will become equal okay so to that time the heat will start transferring from water to the ambient okay so this heat transfer will take place during 2 to 1 okay so that means what as soon as this heat transfer will stop that means our system or the water has reached to the initial state Okay, so that can be identified from 2 to 1 by this curvature line. And during this 2 to 1, in order to bring the whole system back to the initial state, what we have done? We have rejected or removed the heat from the system. That is highlighted by Q21. Right? So here you can appreciate, students, that we have constituted a cycle by the combination of two processes. First is work transfer to the system and second is heat transfer from the system. Okay, so now for this cycle and you can appreciate that this is a closed system, right? Because mass is not transferring from the system to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the system. But the energy can transfer from the system to the surrounding. And due to that, the heat transfer has to take place. Okay, so now this is a closed system. Also, it is constituting a cycle. So the first law can be written as cyclic integral of W is equal to cyclic integral of dQ. Right? Now remember students, dW is what total work transfer during the 1 to 2 process. And dQ is what a change in heat transfer during the 2 to 1 process. And cyclic integral. Okay, so cyclic integral means what? See, the symbol is shown over here. That is cyclic integral symbol. Right? Generally, the cyclic integral symbol is written as integration sign and a circle at the center of the integration sign. Okay, so here a square is shown, but consider that it is a circle. Okay, so cyclic integral symbol is that. And for that cyclic integral, so circle represents what? Circle represents closed path. Okay, so for this closed path, this symbol is written. Okay, so that is why I can write whatever amount of work we have imparted to the system, that same amount of heat is rejected by the system and by doing so, the system has again gained the initial position. So that is the meaning of this. If you, if you understand it uh, more, uh, thoroughly, then you can appreciate that the meaning of this sentence is nothing, meaning of this equation is nothing but your system has initial and final states identical with each other. Okay, so that is how you can appreciate this first law for closed system undergoing a sack. Okay, so now next first law for a closed system undergoing a change of state. Now we recall the introductory. Uh, chapter in that we have already discussed about change of state. Change of state is nothing but any operation during which any one or more than one property gets changed. That is called as change of state. Right? So here change of state means nothing but a process. Right? So if you will take it on exaggerated view that we consider as for process. So let us consider that. So here consider this system. In the system some heat is added to the system and some work is done by the system. So the first law can be written as Q is equal to delta E plus W. So what is the meaning of this? Meaning of this is that, see, 
here the system is given let us say 100 joule of heat and the system will do 70 joule of work so the remaining 30 joule of heat is utilized in increasing the internal energy of the system okay so that is the meaning of this okay so here delta e will be 30 joule okay so there will be some utilization or transfer of energy in form of internal energy okay so that is why for a process or for a change of state you can write the first law is q is equal to delta e plus w remember that and keep in your mind okay same way for a system let us consider a system now we will take multiple heat transfers see in the previous example only single heat transfer and solved, only single work transfer was there now let us take multiple heat transfer q1 q2 and q3 and multiple work transfer w1 2 3 and 4 now if you closely observe over here then q1 is nothing but heat rejected by the system and q2 and q3 is heat added to the system same way w3 and w4 sorry w3 and w2 is work done by the system and w1 and w4 is work done on the system so now if you want to write down the first law of thermodynamics then you have to apply the sign convention and you know the sign convention heat added take positive heat rejected take negative work added take negative work rejected take positive so according to that we can write the first law of thermodynamics as q2 plus q3 minus q1 is equal to delta e plus w2 plus w3 minus w1 minus w4 right here you can appreciate that whatever amount of heat is added it is taken as positive and whatever amount of heat is rejected it is taken as negative and same way the sign convention of work transfer is also considered over here okay students okay now this is the first law for a closed system remember that both systems are closed okay the previous example was for cycle a closed system undergoing a cycle this example is for closed system undergoing a process now let us prove that energy is a property of the system so in order to prove so let us consider this simple diagram so as you can see in this simple diagram p v p is on the y axis volume is on the x axis right now consider three processes different processes between one and two endpoints so you can cons consider that process if you fo follow path a or process a then you can go from one to two if you consider path b then you can go from two to one and you can if you consider path c then you can go from two to one so uh, for going from two to one you have two options that is either b or c okay so now you can appreciate that a and b together will constitute a cycle and also a and c together will constitute a cycle right b and c will not constitute a cycle because both are in same direction okay so now what will be the first law of thermodynamic for path a or process a so for process you can consider that q is equal to delta e plus w you know that right so here the particular process is for path A, so I have written the subscript A, QA is equal to delta EA plus WA. Okay, same way for B and C, what can I write? QB is equal to delta EB plus WB and QC is equal to delta EC plus WC. Clear students? Now, let us consider A and B processes together constituting a cycle. Now, if we consider that cycle, then for that cycle, what we can write? We know that for cycle first law is what? summation of w is equal to summation of q right so here a and b together are constituting a cycle so what will be the work transfer related to a and b so obviously w a plus w b and what will be the heat transfer corresponding to uh, a b cycle obviously q a plus q b so we can write w a plus w b is equal to q a plus q b simple same way now what i will do i will rearrange these terms okay i will rearrange these terms so let us take a subscript A symbols on the one side of the equation and subscript B symbols on the other side of the equations. So if we will do so, we can write QA minus W is equal to WB minus Q, right? So further, you can appreciate that QA minus WA. So from this equation, QA minus WA is nothing but delta EA. And same way, WB minus QB is nothing but 
minus delta E B. Right. So, what is the meaning of this uh, equation? Meaning of this equation is that if you follow path A and if you follow path B, then the both during both paths uh, the change in energy will be same but opposite to each other. That means if by following path A, if you are gaining the energy, then by following path B, you will lose the energy. Okay. The meaning of this equation will be that. Okay. So that means delta E A and delta E B are nothing but same but heavy. Opposite sign. That is due to the fact because what is the fact? The fact is A and B are having different directions. Opposite directions. That is why the minus symbol is there. Now same way let us consider the processes A and C together. So that will also constitute a cycle. So now for again a cycle, the first law will be what? Summation of W is equal to summation of Q. Now here summation of W for A and C together we will write W A plus W C and for Q we will write Q A plus Q C. Rearrange these terms, right? So we can write Q A minus W S delta E A and W C minus Q C S minus delta E C. Now previous result if you recall that was delta E A is equal to minus delta E B and here delta E A is equal to minus delta E C. That means delta E B and delta E C will be same. Right? So ultimately the meaning of this thing together will what? The meaning of this thing together will be simple that between 1 and 2 you follow any path either A, B or C. Amount of change of energy will remain same. So that means the energy is something which is not dependent on the path. So that means energy is something that depends on the end states and if anything depends on the end states then it will be called as point function and if it is a point function then it will be considered as property and that is why it is proved that energy is a property okay students same way let us consider energy of an isolated system so here energy of an isolated system can, see, can be considered very simply. If you recall the introductory session that isolated system is what? Simple. Okay. Mass and energy cannot transfer from system to the surrounding or the surrounding from the system. Right. So you can consider the DQ and DW. Both will be zero. Right. Same way if we consider that isolated system. So first one is what? Delta Q is equal to delta E plus delta W. So here delta Q and delta W both are zero. That means delta E or DE is equal to zero. So DE is equal to zero. That means energy will remain constant. Therefore, you can judge. So for isolated system, the energy will remain constant. Always. The example is universe. So if you consider universe, then for our universe, the energy will remain always constant. The entropy will remain or entropy will always tend to increase for the universe. We will discuss on the entropy chapter. Okay. Further, perpetual motion machine of first kind PMM1. Very uh, important topic. PMM1 concept is very simple as you can see on the diagram. See, in a, let us consider this engine. What perpetual, the word perpetual means it is fictitious. It is not true. It is imaginary. Okay, so now let us understand the concept. What is the concept? See, here we have an engine. Okay, so in this engine, we are not supplying any heat. Though the engine is continuously producing some work. Now you will tell me, okay, sir, that is not, not possible. Yes, I know that is not possible. But if such engine is possible, then it will be called as PMM1. Perpetual motion machine of first kind. So you, it does not require any heat input, but it will give you continuous work output. That is known as W or PMM1, right? So that is perpetual motion machine of first kind. Reverse statement is also true, students. Let us understand. Let us take one machine. This machine is consuming some work continuously. Okay, it is absorbing some work continuously, but it is not transferring any heat. Okay, so that is also known as perpetual motion machine of first kind. Let me give you an example of this engine. Let us consider, uh, you know you know that if, if you ride the bike, then for the bike, uh, 
the bike will consume some fuel let us say petrol so the petrol it will consume so that means ultimately it is consuming some heat from the petrol okay so your bike is not consuming any petrol still you are uh, able to ride the bike if that kind of engine is working that is known as pmm1 so that is the example of first one and example of second diagram is very simple if we have a machine so let us consider a refrigerator at our home let us consider that this refrigerator is continuously absorbing the electricity so the switch is on but it is not cooling any thing in the refrigerator compartment that means it is not giving you any cooling effect so if that kind of machine also exists that is also known as pmm1 okay it is continuously absorbing the work okay so that is how you can consider this pmm1 remember students it is a fictitious and not possible ideal case okay so today we are going to keep up to this point thank you